The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon or evening or morning to everyone. Uh, have a lot of people from across the country and around the world here today, including, uh, if I'm not mis mistaken, uh, someone from Portugal. So uh, welcome to everybody. My name is Tom Murphy. Uh, I welcome you to our webinar this afternoon. Uh, as uh, hopefully you're here for the uh, uh, content marketing webinar, because that's the subject for today. And again, my name is Tom Murphy. I'm with Murphy Consulting Incorporated. The short name for our company is Mercon. We are located in uh, Georgia, just northeast of Atlanta, in the uh, thriving metropolis of Pendergrass, Georgia. It's a great, beautiful day, uh, sunshiny here today. I hope you're having uh, great weather as well. Mercon's in the business of helping businesses like yours and mine uh, grow through the use of uh, internet marketing. We have two major areas of expertise, internet marketing and Microsoft Access database development. In internet marketing, uh, we're primarily focused on constant contact products and services such as email, events, surveys, and promotions, but we also design and develop and support websites. Uh, if we can ever help you in any one of those particular areas, uh, please let me know. be happy to be of help to you. Uh, I'm coming to you today uh, as a constant contact master certified authorized local expert. And basically that says that <clears throat> constant contact has trained me uh, and authorized me to present this material to you today. I am a, a long-term user of constant contact services as well. So from a, a business perspective, I use constant contact services to help me grow my business uh, on a daily basis. Um, I will be at the, uh, the end of this webinar sending you an email. Uh, it has a link to a survey in it and uh, at the end of the survey are links to the slides for this presentation and to the recorded video. I uh, really would appreciate it if you would do that survey for me. It helps me uh, improve what I'm doing so that I can help you more as we go along. I uh, would like to let you know that because you came to the webinar today, you'll be entered into a cash drawing that will be held on March the 31st for all those who registered or attended, uh, especially filled out the survey. You'll have a chance to win some uh, cash prizes on March the 31st. Uh, those of you who may not be uh, familiar with the GoToWebinar control panel, which is on the right side of your screen, a couple of things to point out. There is a, uh, an area where you can ask questions. I encourage you to do that throughout the presentation. I probably will not get to answer them until the end of the presentation because we're going to go pretty quick. But uh, put your questions in, and I'll get to them uh, at the end of the webinar. There also is a uh, what's called a hand tool. It looks like a raised yellow or gold hand. Uh, you can use this to respond to any questions I might ask. And uh, it would help right now just to make sure that I know that, you're, uh, that you've found that. If everybody would uh, click that and raise your hand, uh, I would appreciate it. Then I can see that we're communicating. Yeah, just raise your hand. That's, uh, that's good. I see that uh, most everybody has their hand raised, and I appreciate that. So I'm just going to uh, lower those for right now. This webinar today is a best practices webinar. Of course, I'm going to use some constant contact examples, uh, and I might mention constant contact as we go along. But the, con the techniques and the tips and tricks, if you will, that, uh, that I'll cover this afternoon or today, uh, are applicable not only for email, but social media and print. So content is king, as I have uh, noted before. And uh, we'll talk about those things as we go along, but it's best practices for, uh, for most everything. Uh, I note that there are some folks on the call today that are probably uh, not familiar with constant contact. I'm going to take just a moment and uh, kind of let people know what constant contact is all about. Uh, 
You can grow your business with constant contact. Obviously, there's four major product areas or service areas that contact, constant contact offers. Uh, the first is newsletters and announcements, which is uh, has to do primarily with email marketing, offers and promotions, which lets you do deals and promotional kinds of things. Feedback and surveys, which allow you to do online surveys and put polls in your email as well. And events and registrations, which allows you to do online registrations for events and uh, collect fees and those kinds of things with great reporting that goes along with that. Uh, for our live in-person seminars that I do, uh, this is an invaluable tool. So those are the four areas that Constant Contact covers. It's a one toolkit of services, one login to get to all of those so you don't need to go to different places. There are two tiers of services, email and email plus. Email includes newsletters and announcements. Email plus includes all campaign types uh, as well as uh, email automation. All the packages are 24-7 toll-free American speaking coaches, coaching support included. And uh, if you ever talk to folks that are already Constant Contact customers, they'll probably rave about the support. I use them myself as well. So let's talk about talk about constant not constant contact but content marketing. Uh, what I'd like to do to begin with is start off with a simple definition or framework for what marketing really is. You probably already have a definition of your own for uh, for marketing, but I'm going to give you a specific definition so that we can all kind of start on the same footing. My definition of marketing has three simple parts. First of all, you want to define an audience, a group of people that you want to target. You reach out to them with a message that's specific to that particular audience. And third, you elicit a physical, measurable response. Physical, measurable response. These are the results that you want and need that your business uh, wants to get. And uh, if you're not measuring, getting that measurable response, then you're really not marketing your advertising. So what kind of results are we talking about? Uh, lots of different kinds of results. Uh, these are examples of measurable responses. These actions represent a decision by a person to do something in the response to what uh, you have put out. It's not a mechanical response. It's a human response, and it must be measurable. But keep in mind that your overall goals come back to why you're in business or what's going to keep you in business, generating revenue or gathering donations. Uh, hopefully, we have some nonprofit businesses. Uh, uh, those are nonprofit on purpose anyway on the call today as well, uh, so donations are important. If the responses that you're getting don't lead in some way directly to the bottom line, then you should evaluate why you're driving those types of responses. Today we're going to talk about the content you can share, whether it's written or images that can drive the responses you need to help your business or organization grow. Content is currency on the internet. Content is currency on the internet and it works offline too in print. When it comes to content you have an advantage over big businesses and other large organizations because you can use the tools and tips we'll talk about today to have a real conversation with your customers, clients, members and volunteers. Larger companies don't really have conversations. You can also use their feedback and questions to come up with new content. And we'll go over that uh, uh, when we talk about that a little bit later. Content is what people search for. It's what they consume. It's what they share. It's what they pay attention to. Through the content you email, you email to your audience, you can become a source that your customers, clients, members, and volunteers know, like, and trust. As we progress through this presentation, think about the conversations you have with your customers and clients. What kind of questions do they ask? 
how can you use those questions and conversations to create a great email with very relevant content. So next, let's tackle the big question. What kind of content should you use in your email? Email content basically boils down to three things, a picture, a paragraph, and a call to action. Picture, paragraph, call to action. Email content is made up of words, images, or videos that you use in your email campaigns that are designed specifically to attract, convert, or retain an audience. When you're sending out an email to people on your contact list, you want to make sure it's relevant and interesting and includes a clear call to action. Some people call that the CTA, call to action, meaning the response that you're seeking to solicit from your readers, whether that's buying a product, taking your advice, signing up for services, referring you to a friend, donating to your nonprofit, answering your survey, as I wish that you would do this, a this afternoon or today when I send it to you, or whatever action you're hoping to take, that's the call to action. You can make that call to action easily accessible by including links to whatever you want your audience to do. This is an example from a company called Great Vacation Retreats, and I believe we have a couple of travel companies uh, on the call today, which is great. At the top of the message, they have a great picture that prominently features their brand, a text block that announces their deal, a paragraph that describes it, and a link, which is the call to action for readers to view their available vacation rentals. Even if they didn't list the individual rentals in the email, they'd have more than enough information that communicates the action they want their audience to take which is to click on the link to book a rental in Kauai. And as a bonus, <clears throat> the approach that Great Vacation Retreats took with this particular email is inherently mobile friendly or mobile responsive. It's a single column template. There's not too much text and it's not too long. This email will look great no matter where the reader opens it either on a mobile device or on the desktop. Remember when you're thinking of content that you're creating from scratch, you're not writing for yourself. You're writing for your audience. So make your message relevant, short, and focused. Relevant, short, and focused. Your email shouldn't be telling recipients every single thing that you do, and it shouldn't include extraneous information. It should be very focused. You can make it relevant to your audience by thinking about the conversations you've had with your clients, customers, and members. After an interaction, you may want to jot down some ideas that can help you expand on a topic later in an email. I've mentioned relevance a few times, and here's why it's important that you include content that's for your audience and not for yourself. 38% of email recipients will unsubscribe if they think the content in your email is boring or irrelevant. And when a person unsubscribes, at least with constant contact, you won't be able to communicate with them again. 32% will send irrelevant content to their spam folder. That can impact how email providers like Gmail or Yahoo sort your future messages. So keep those kinds of things in mind. So with that in an introduction, as an introduction, here's what we're going to talk about today. How to create content. How to curate content. And if you're not familiar with that term, uh, we'll define it a little bit later how to extend things to create content, and some next steps to take. So let's first talk about content creation. What do you write about in your emails? This is one of the biggest questions and the biggest hurdles people encounter when they set out to create an email, and those who have not 
are not doing email marketing right now, that may be a hurdle for you trying to figure out what to write. And that's what we're talking about today. The good news is that you know your organization better than anyone else. And there's just a ton of ideas out there just for you. First, and above all else, you write about what you know that they don't know. This is an opportunity to share your knowledge and raise your profile as an interesting organization and an expert in your field. First thing we'll talk about concerning content is offerings. That's a few ideas we're going to cover. If you have a new product, you can write a paragraph, just a paragraph, describing what it does. Use photos or videos to share a quick product demonstration or tutorial. If you have an event coming up, send out all the details in a short email, including a link to register for the event. And you'll get some of that information when we send out the email. It'll tell you about future events that we're having. Having Updates. Do you have a new location? You hired a new employee? employee? Do you have a well-known employee retiring? Send out a biography and a photo to your customers and clients. Updates can go out in the form of newsletters, press releases, or other types of, uh, of correspondence as well. Perhaps you're a nonprofit and you've received a big grant. That's a perfect reason to send out an email update. Did you have a recent event? Send out a survey asking recipients how it was or send an email to share photos of the event. Education. You're an expert in your field. Write about what you know. Your audience doesn't know everything that you know. This is your opportunity to weigh in with your perspective on a study or a news story that's come out. If you sell a product, you can make a video that demonstrates how to use it. You could also share your know-how. Let's say you own a landscaping company. You can send out an email early in the spring and lay out a good planting schedule for your clients. I know I would appreciate that. And don't be afraid to show your fun side either. Have you seen a funny YouTube video that relates to your field? Or have you heard an interesting, funny, or inspiring quote you want to share? Maybe you and your employees have made a cool behind-the-scenes video. That's something that could really show off your environment and your personality. It's a good idea to remind people about holiday or seasonal kinds of things as well. Uh, for me, Easter is coming up very soon. It's a great way to send out something that is themed around that particular holiday. And uh, everybody, uh, here, at least here in the United States, is thinking about taxes and it's tax preparation time. Uh, other CPAs and those that do taxes, uh, I know I have received a couple of emails concerning things to do now and also things to do in the future to improve my uh, tax situation. But it's spring, spring cleaning, gardening, beach vacation, all of those are seasonal kinds of things and content kinds of things that can be entertaining. So let's talk about how much content is enough. <clears throat> uh, the, the guideline and the most important guideline about how much is enough is sh less is more. Less is more. Nobody likes to see a real long email. Uh, like to see a show of hands of anybody who likes to read really long emails. Show of hands. Nobody. Uh, that's the normal response that I get. There's no rule that says your newsletter or whatever communication you're sending out needs to have three articles, three pictures, or three links. One is enough. There's actually a constant contact customer whose newsletter is called One Thing. He did it to make it easy on himself, and it works really well. People can absorb one thing, 
and he's not under the gun to come up with a bunch of content to fill it in. We did a study, or Constant Contact did a study uh, recently uh, and found that the best practice is to limit yourself to 20 lines of text, three or fewer images. Just like you, your audience is very busy. We don't need to worry about sending out a ton of information every time uh, we send something out because nobody's going to read it. Research also shows that one link gets the best click-through rate. You want your audience to take an action, so use a link to make that clear. Two links are okay, but once you get to three links, the click-through rate really starts to decline. And any higher than five links means that people are less likely to click anywhere in your email. So try to stick with one or two clicks and keep them high up in your message so people don't have to scroll down to take an action. And don't forget that more than half of your audience is reading email on a mobile device. Who's going to scroll through 14 articles on their phone? Nobody. And for your mobile readers, make sure that you're keeping your message short. Again, less is more. And keep your calls of action above the scroll. Used to call that a newspaper was above the fold. It's above the scroll. Don't make people have to scroll down to look at, to find your call to action. That's very important in mobile marketing. Even if the idea of creating content still feels a little daunting, remember keeping your messages short and focused is actually much, much better than putting tons of information out there. As I said before, one idea is good enough. You can use outlines to uh, help you further focus your ideas and organize the sections of your email. That's any text you'll write yourself any photos, videos you want to use, and any content from outside sources that you want to share. We'll talk about content curation in just a few minutes. You might also uh, jot down a list of topics that come up in conversation with your customers, your members, your donors, your clients, and use those to spark ideas for email campaigns. If you get five questions from your clients, that's five separate email topics that you can build on. Show your expertise in your field. Become a knowledgeable resource for your audience, and they'll look forward to emails from you. And make sure that your content reflects your brand. This is easy to do with email tools like Constant Contact or other uh, service providers. We won't get into email design today, although we do have a, a webinar that goes into email design. But you can visit uh, the Constant Contact website, if you'd like, for great design tips and tricks to make your emails look visually fantastic. Let's talk about turning your interactions with your customers or clients into content for your email. Think for a second about the last interaction you had with someone at your, or, at your organization. What questions did a customer or client have? What information are people requesting about your nonprofit, for example? Can you turn the answer to their questions into an email? Here are some great examples. One easy way to practice this in real life is to create two columns, as we have here. On the left, uh, write down the questions that you regularly get. And in the right column, write down a way you can turn the answers to those questions into an email full of fresh, revel relevant content. Again, 20 lines of text, three graphics, one link. That's what you're shooting for. No more than 20 lines of text, no more than three graphics, a graphic, but it, no more than three, and one link to call to action. So I want to show you what the difference between a regular email that you might send out from uh, Outlook, Gmail, Yahoo, your normal service providers, and once 
sent through an email service provider like Constant Contact. An email from an email service provider looks better and gets you noticed. You can use it to feature your brand's logo and colors, include graphics that will capture your reader's attention. Of course, all of this, including the graphics, comprises email content. And I know for those of you who are already Constant Contact customers, I'm preaching to the choir, but this is very important to remember the difference between the one on the left and the one on the right. If you look at the one on the right, the colors and graphics make the message eye-catching and more prof professional looking than obviously the one on the left. Do you ever send regular emails like the one on the left? Yes, day-to-day -day emails. That's what you normally use but wouldn't you rather send your newsletter out looking like the one on the right? As a matter of fact, uh, and this may be a relief for some of you suffering from writer's block, great content doesn't have to be written at all. I hate this slide because I really love chocolate, by the way. Visual content like photos, videos, graphics, and word images makes a huge impact in an email inbox. Did you know that 90% of information processed by the brain is visual and more than half of consumers believe that images are a very important factor when buying? Visuals are important to your business because they influence customers purchasing decisions. 67% of com consumers believe that images are a very important factor when selecting and purchasing a product. You can use photos to show off your products or shots from a recent event. You can link to videos to show your organization in action or a product demonstration. Word images, that is a brief phrase, a statistic or quote over a background image, are a great way to share information in an eye-catching way. And this slide is a very good example of that. And creating that visual content is really easier than ever today. Almost everyone with a smartphone has the ability to shoot high-quality photos and videos. They don't have to be tremendously professional. They just have to reflect you. You don't need much time or a huge marketing budget to create something that is a compelling image. You've got the technology right there in the palm of your hand. I know you've heard that a picture is worth a thousand words and in your email you can communicate through images as well as text. Turn your images into clickable links. Clickable links. So that when your readers click on the image they will be directed to the action you want them to take. Just make sure you always include a text link as well as the visual link to the same location. And this is because a high percentage, uh, about 67% of email readers will not see images in their email by default. They only receive text. Email tools like Constant Contact make it easy to assign a web address to your images and also to add alt text, that is alternate text, so that a description of the image appears even if the reader doesn't see the picture. And again, try to avoid giving too many choices in your campaign. These are supposed to be quick decisions to act. Clicking to shop in your online store, selecting an item and clicking to buy. Too many choices will reduce the number of decisions or actions a person can take. It's a time limit thing. Think of your campaign as window shopping. You want to entice someone to come in right then and buy because of whatever it is that got their attention. One thing. When you're using images in your marketing, you're faced with the task of creating that content, deciding what images are best and determining their context and the story to wrap around them. That's a lot to think about, and you're probably wondering where to begin. Well, here's some direction on where to begin. Images can be created around your business, 
your environment, your expertise, themes that you decide your audience will love. You don't have to have a product to sell to include visual content in your emails. If you have a new employee, feature their photo with a caption explaining who they are and what they'll bring to your business. If you're a nonprofit, share photos of a recent event or a graphic showing the progress of a fundraising campaign. Photos are a frequent and necessary piece for visual content, obviously. Sometimes you may find you need a photo that you do not have or cannot create on your own. There are a variety of online stock photo sites where you can search for just the right photo that fits your needs. They're a great resource and you can work well with them for the visual content that's based around a theme, a tip, a fact, or a quote. When you download a photo, be sure it's the right size or slightly larger than what you really need. You can always crop it or scale it down, but will lose image quality if you try to enlarge it even a little bit. So larger, better, high resolution images are better to use, obviously, than, than low resolution. It might be tempting, but never a good idea to use just any image you may find through a search, including sample stock photos with a watermark on them. There can be copyright issues associated with those images because they belong to somebody else. When you do use stock photos, you purchase the rights to use the photo or in some case accept a free download and agree to certain credits or conditions. Fees can vary from site, website to website, so shop around what, what feels right to you <clears throat> Excuse me, and fit your budget. Here are some services that offer stock photos. Those of you who are constant contact customers probably uh, recognize Big Stock. Uh, Big Stock offers over 12 million images uh, through Constant Contact's email service. Some are free, some are not free, uh, but I'll tell you the, the variety is so large. I've, I use Big Stock's photos within Constant Contact all the time and I've never had to pay for one. But even if you aren't a customer of Constant Contact, Big Stock, Stock Vault, FreeImages.com and others offer a wide variety of images that you can use uh, with permission. Video is powerful. It's a powerful way to engage your audience. And again, a visual is worth a thousand words. When using a video, make sure that you mention in your subject line that your email includes a video so your readers know about it right away. That makes it more enticing. Consumers to prefer watching a video to reading long text articles. Uh, if you have a Facebook account, which I'm sure most everybody does, uh, it's replete with visuals. Uh, but make sure that the length of a video, if you do use a video, uh, is within about 90 seconds. That's a point at which 58% of viewers stop watching 90 seconds. You can make video really work for your business. Use it to show product demos, customer testimonials, promotional material, or share user-generated content. At the very bottom of this slide in the left-hand corner, one of the sources is a source called Animoto. If you've never looked at Animoto.com, that's A-N-I-M-O-T-O.com, go take a look at the free what you can get for free at Animoto.com. It's really cool. We're talking about email today, but video is becoming very prominent on social media. 84% 84% of consumers have liked videos from companies in their social media news feeds. If you email a video link, you can also repurpose it on your social media platforms for that audience to watch and share. The example here is a great way to use video. The pajama program, 
sent this email out with a link to a video thanking their donors. Just remember, remember to keep your video short. Uh, I've said it a few times already, but your audience is very busy, as you are. And again, video should be about 90 seconds or less, 90 seconds or less. Make sure you're using video in a careful, deliberate way as well. If you have some specific action that you want your readers to take, for example, to register for an event, you should choose text and pictures rather than video. And I'm going to say that again. If you're asking someone to register an event as an example, use text and pictures rather than video. Using a video in that case will lessen the likelihood that your readers will take the action because they will click on the video and be taken to YouTube. The example on the right from Pajama, pajama Programs, when they click on a day uh, to give, it takes them to YouTube. So it takes them off of that email. Now let's talk about curating content. Curation is a very interesting term, and that's finding and distributing content that is relevant, educational, entertaining, and newsworthy. You might feel uh, a little overwhelmed at this point, thinking you have to think up infinite ideas to create content from scratch. Luckily, that's not the case at all. We know you don't have any time to spare in the operation of your small organization. The great news is that you can curate content meaning that you can find content created by others and share it with your email contacts. Think about a curator at an art museum. That person uses their expertise to collect and present artwork from many different sources and arrange that artwork in a way that's educational and organized. They're not responsible for painting every canvas. Your created curated content could be a link to a news article related to your organization with a brief paragraph including your perspective on that article the example on the screen shows a cycling company sharing their favorite headlines in cycling news for a weekly newsletter all they had to do was write a brief introduction and then link to the articles your audience will come to rely on you as an expert in your field. Let's say you run an animal shelter and you come across an article about coyotes in your area. You can introduce that link by giving some, perhaps some helpful tips for pet owners to keep their dogs and cats safe. And in our area of Georgia, uh, coyotes are a problem. Or maybe you own a restaurant. And a new food trend has been talking about, uh, been talked about in national media. You can link to a video from a TV station and tell your contacts how you've added some trendy items to your menu as well. Lots of different places online where you can find content to share through emails. Read your local and regional news. Maybe you've been mentioned or maybe you have something to say about goings on in your community. A lot of new sites, sites offer their recent content for free. Our newspapers in this area do that as well. Just make sure that if you link to content on a news site, it's not something you need a subscription to read. You can read blogs related to your field. One way to easily gather lots of blog posts is through Feedly. Now, before we started uh, doing this particular uh, webinar, I had never heard of Feedly. I now have a subscription to Feedly, which feeds me uh, information on several different areas. It's a service that aggregates blogs from all over. You can customize a Feedly account, and it's free, by the way by selecting the areas you're interested in reading about. It's a great way to find content you can share with your contents, contacts. Uh, I have uh, articles or I get blog aggregation for tech and business and uh, gadgets because I like gadgets. So Feedly helps a lot there. 
You should follow others on social media as well. This is a world of almost infinite possibilities. Let's go back to the animal shelter example. Uh, they would want to follow other shelters, the ASPCA, pet retailers, and other animal advocacy groups, and share content from those sources. Set up Google Alerts. Google will aggregate pages that mention a phrase you've created an alert for. First one you should set up is your organization's name. You can keep an eye on what people are saying about you online. Uh, I have two that I've set up. One is for Mercon and Murphy Consulting, Inc. And the other is for QR codes because I like to follow what's going on with QR codes. Subscribe to other email lists as well. This is a great way to get ideas for content and see what other people are sharing. You can always unsubscribe to email lists that you subscribe to if you don't like them. And finally, you should always provide links to the original source and let people know why you're sharing the content. Some people have asked whether it's plagiarism to share content by other people. The answer is definitely not. As long as you cite your source, you can share what's publicly available. You're actually helping the source broaden their audience by sharing their content with your audience. The difference between sharing and plagiarism is citing the source. If you were, if you were to copy and paste somebody's blog and pass it off as your own without mentioning the source, that's plagiarism. Always give credit where credit is due. One way to be creative and, and great content uh, is to, to easily share via email and on social media is to have others create it for you. You can do that through sharing behind the scenes videos or photos like this one from uh, the Avenue Gallery showing one of its employees loading a painting to be transported. You can also use client or customer testimonials. There's a few ways you can approach these, by the way. You can ask a client to share their story on a video, again, 90 seconds or less, or write a paragraph about their experience. Or if you have a place on your website for reviews, uh, you can just pull content right from those reviews to use. You can also compile user-generated content. Uh, this Facebook post uh, from the Wakiva Falls RV Park shows uh, shares a photo from a customer who documented her recent visit. One way to inspire user-generated content is to create a hashtag. Everybody probably knows what a hashtag is. It, it's a word or a fr phrase beginning with a pound sign or a number sign or as we call it now, a hash sign. That creates a link co connecting all of the posts using that same hashtag on a particular social network. And actually, if you go to Google and put hashtag phrase or word, you can uh, pull up uh, lots of different listings from multiple social networks. You could, of course, create your own hashtag by coming up with a unique word or phrase or even your brand name. Make sure you keep it short and don't use any spaces or punctuation in that hashtag, just letters and numbers. For example, uh, Constant Contact uses pound sign or hashtag CTCT Life to share pictures and vid videos of company culture. Once you've created a hashtag, ask your customers, clients, members, employees, and volunteers to create social media posts with that hashtag. Then you can select your favorites to share. One caution about hashtags. Before you create a hashtag for your particular organization, go out on the Internet and see if somebody else is already using that hashtag that perhaps doesn't have content that agrees with what you are. Find a unique hashtag, a unique hashtag. Now we're going to talk about how you can extend your reach beyond your email audience. 
once you decide what content you're going to use in your communication, it's time to share it. This way you extend your reach as much as possible. Using email is one way to share content, but you can also sh share it through social media. Email marketing tools like Constant Contact make it easy for you to share your content on different social platforms and also for your audience to share your content across their social platforms. When you're thinking of content to use on social media, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can use the content you've already sent in your email and break it into smaller pieces of social media content. It's called repurposing. Don't worry, this isn't going to translate into a lot of extra work for you. You're already building out content for the future as you focus on your emails. For example, uh, let's say you're mar a marketing consultant for businesses, like I am. You run a lot of events. You've sent an email to those clients with four tips about selling more tickets for their events. We'll call that your original email. Now let's quickly think of a few ways to extend the content by expanding on each tip as its very own social media post. The tip on sending your invitations in advance could be expanded to a Facebook post about when to send your event invitations. Hanging flyers in your store could be turned into a great infographic or effective flyer design that you share across all your social networks. Advice to post events on Facebook could expand to a blog post on promoting events on Facebook, which you, of course, can easily share across all your social networks. And a tip about special pricing for VIPs, <clears throat> that could be repurposed into five tweets spread across a week about the things VIPs want. Here's an example of a company. Uh, this one happens to be uh, the Grafton Inn in Vermont, which uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who is from Vermont. Believe it or not, they didn't get much snow this year, so there wasn't much skiing. In, at the Grafton Inn this year. But this example from uh, the Grafton Inn repurposing uh, content, they used this image of a porch on our porch swing in their email, which announced summer activities at the end. They repurposed the photo on Facebook to show their weekly schedule, and on Instagram, they shared it with their follow followers with a cute caption. This says, who doesn't love a porch swing? And uh, they have a couple of hashtags that follow that. You can do the same thing. Take a tip, a quote, an image, or anything that your audience will find interesting and share it on whatever social network you use. We also have some other webinars and seminars on social media marketing as well, by the way. Now, do you coop? Now, do you do do keep a few things in mind? First of all, change the content a little bit for each network, and I'm not just talking about its size. Change the caption or the text in the post to reflect the style, the etiquette, or the voice for each network. Don't post exactly the same thing in each place. Next, don't worry about being repetitive. People are following you because they like you. They might miss your post on Facebook book, but catch it later on Pinterest. Or they might follow you on Pinterest and not Facebook. So you need to make sure you're covering all the places people might be seeing your content. And finally, while we're talking about using multiple social networks, keep in mind that you don't have to use all of them for your business. Just choose the ones that you feel are right for you and your audience. It's better to focus on a couple of social networks and do a good job with them than have a bunch that you don't have time for or time to manage properly. 
when it comes to extending your reach, you want to make sure that you're meeting your audience again where they are. Email is a great place to start, but you can reach more people by sharing your email content on all of your social media platforms. Think about it this way. There is probably some overlap between your email contact list and your followers on social media, but those groups are not likely to be identical. Also, what your followers do on social media, their followers see as well. If someone likes or comments on your post on Facebook, all of their friends or fans will see that and see your name. Marketing on social media tends to be much less expensive than traditional advertising. If cost is an issue, you'll get more return on your time, your money, and your energy by first going through email and subsequently through Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. Each has its own typical audience and decision process, and they do differ significantly. So you want to start on social networks you already use and then begin to move to where your customers and contacts are so that you can leverage the existing network that you have on those sites and begin to generate some social visibility along the way. To be clear, email is part of social media. Email is part of social media. And if you're doing it right, Keeping your messages short, making the action or response obvious and simple, and providing access, information, and real value, real value, then you will grow your business. The best part of it, if you're a constant contact customer anyway, anyway we make sharing your emails on social media really easy. Uh, if you're using constant contact, you can add a share bar to the top of your emails. And there are other services that allow this as well, but this is an example of what you can do with constant contact. You can also add social media buttons that link to your business's social media profiles. The buttons are a nice visual reminder for them to click and follow you online. You can remind your audience to share your promotions, ask them to like them on Facebook, retweet on Twitter, or pin on Pinterest. Your audience, no matter how few or how many they may be, have a lot of influence via word of mouth, and you can get your promotions in front of more people, their friends, and their family if they help you spread the word. What I always do in, in most of uh, my emails is at the bottom of the email, I ask people to use the share bar. Ask people to forward to a friend. Ask people to go take a look at my social media buttons. People will do what you ask them to do if you ask them. Constant Contact also allows you to extend the reach of your emails by using the social share tool. Social Share offers a quick and easy way to share an email on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn with suggested post messages, images, and the best times to schedule posts based on when your social audience is most active. It also makes it easy to plan social posts for an email with a monthly calendar. If you're not using this particular tool, those of you who are constant contact customers, start now. You can also schedule Facebook posts, of course, on Facebook, or you can other, use other services like Hootsuite.com, but you can use, do it all in one place on constant contact with social share. So let's talk about next steps you can take. Remember, when you're thinking of content that you'll create from scratch, but not exactly from scratch. But keep in mind you're not writing for yourself either. You're writing for your audience. So use links to direct your audience where you want them to go and make your message relevant, short, and focused. 
relevant, short, and focused with the call to action very clear. It can be very helpful to keep a calendar, keep your calendar to schedule emails and social media posts ahead of time. Keep that running list of topics that come up in uh, your organization and plan out your publishing schedule in whatever way that works best for you. It can be pretty helpful to keep a calendar to schedule emails and social media posts. Uh, keep that running list of topics that you come up with in your organization that we talked about earlier and plan out your publishing schedule in whatever way that works best for you. There are no hard and fast rules, which is really good, on how you should schedule. And if you'll bear with me just a second, let me fix the uh, plug-in on my uh, laptop to make sure that we don't run out of power uh, before we get finished here. That would not be good. Thanks for indulging me there. Uh, again, no hard and fast rules about how you should schedule. Just make sure whatever you do is realistic for you to follow, whether you're using an Outlook calendar, a Google Doc, a notes app on your mobile device, or a handwritten schedule, or anything else that keeps you organized. If you're using an email marketing service like Constant Contact, you can track what types of content get the most clicks and opens and use that information as a guide for future emails. You can also keep track of what day of the week or time of the day gets the most activity, which is very important and valuable marketing intelligence. You can also, from time to time, send out a survey asking your audience what types of content they'd prefer to receive from you, and uh, I do that periodically as well. At the beginning of this presentation, I said that email content boils down to a picture, a paragraph, call to action. Picture, paragraph, call to action. You can use this as a really basic outline to create content for any subject you might think of. Take, a, take the last question you answered for a customer, client, member, donor, volunteer, and develop an email around it using a picture, a paragraph, and a call to action. So let's go back to our first example about the vacations in Hawaii and say our customer's question is, what offers are available for renting in Maui? First, the picture. Remember, 90% of information absorbed by the brain is visual, so how can you illustrate the subject to catch your reader's attention? Don't forget you can use stock photography. Don't need to be selling a product to use visuals. This photo of a beautiful seaside cliff in Hawaii grabs the reader and makes that reader want to learn more about seeing it in person. What is it that you need to write? Well, respond to that last question you were asked. Your paragraph can be just a few words introducing a link, a longer explanation about the subject, or tips to answer the question in a few steps. In the example, the paragraph explains that rentals are available and that every third night is free. Very hard to read that, but that's what it says. Finally, you need a call to action. What do you want your audience to do in reaction to your email? Come to your business for a consultation, buy a product, register for an event, or donate. Make your call to action prominent and clear. Here, the call to action is a link where readers can go to the vacation company's website and see, then hopefully, hopefully reserve the available rentals in Hawaii. Let's go over a couple more examples because uh, we have time to do that. Um, and uh, we'll talk about uh, maybe a, a B to C, a business to consumer type of, type of company. And that uh, actually is what this example is. But let's say you own a wine shop and I'm, uh, you're getting a lot of questions about what foods to prepare, 
with rose wine. Uh, you can take a photo of a beautiful glass of rose with a meal or of a display in your store, and after that can write five tips for prefer preparing different foods with rosé wines. And finally, as my call to action, I might uh, uh, include a coupon for 20% off a selected type of rosé. Um, business to business which is the kind of company that I have most of the time I'm uh, dealing with other businesses. Uh, one of my clients has asked me uh, perhaps how often they should be posting on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. I can use a word image, a picture with words laid over it, to easily list the different platforms and the best practices for frequency, or I could use a infographic with that same information. That's my image. Then I could write a few sentences explaining that I've written a blog on the subject and include a link to the blog post. That's my paragraph and my call to action. And how about nonprofits? Well, let's say I'm the president of a local conservation group and a resident has written to ask about the progress of a river cleanup project my group is working on. I can include before and after photos of an area that was cleaned up, a paragraph describing what is going to happen next, and links for my audience to donate or volunteer. These are my calls to action. Very simple, very short. From there, I can repurpose my email content by breaking the subjects down even further into posts on my social media platforms. So, pretty much there you have it. We've talked about, talked about creating content, curating content, extending that content from email to social media. Now let's talk about some next, and we've talked about next steps. Now some of you may be sitting there saying, wow, that's a uh, that's a little bit more than I can do. Well, meet Shelly. Shelly's a small business owner, and this is a real person, by the way. She's a marketer, and you can be a marketer, too. All it takes is a tool like Constant Contact. And if you're not already a Constant Contact customer, it's really easy to get started. If you'll give me a call today or contact me by email or text or however, to start a paid email only account or an email plus account, you'll receive a gift card equal to your first month's subscription and get a free custom mobile responsive template created for you uh, using your uh, graphics that you have on your website. If you're a current customer of Constant Contact, and become a Mercon VIP customer, then you'll receive, and then maybe upgrade from your current email to an email plus account, then I'll be happy to give you a gift card that's valued at the difference between the email and email plus subscription that you may already have. And please keep in mind, as always, that uh, Constant Contact Services, no contract, 100% money back guarantee, toll free, American speaking, 24-7 coaching support is included in all of the services that Constant Contact offers. I really appreciate you being here today. Again, I'll send you an email with a link to a short survey and uh, uh, a link to the slide set and to the video for today's presentation. Don't forget that question that is in the uh, survey about becoming a Mercon VIP. Really like to have you as part of that, uh, that elite group of folks in our customer set. So at this time, I will open it up for questions. And again, the way we can do that is if you'll type the questions in, then I'll be more than happy to answer them. But again, for those who are leaving early, Thanks a lot. I'm glad for you to be here, and I'll address questions at this time.